Welcome to the Planet of Maths channel. In today's video, we'll be solving an equation with an absolute value. The first example is the absolute value of x equals 6. To solve such an equation, we need to think about what would have to be inside so that we get the absolute value of it to come out as 6. And if we think for a moment, there are two such cases. The absolute value of 6 is equal to 6. And in the second case, the absolute value of negative 6 is also 6. This means that this interior, which in our example is x, this x must be equal 6. Or the second option, this x might also equal negative 6. And these are our two solutions for this example. Generally, equations with absolute value will most often have two solutions. In example b, it's a bit different. We have this 3 in front here. We have to get rid of this 3, so we're removing this number. In fact, we always eliminate what is outside the absolute value. We don't want this 3 here, so we divide both sides of the equation by 3. On this side, these 3's cancel out that only the absolute value of x remains. And on the other side, 6 divided by 3 gives us a result of 2. Now similar to example A, when will the absolute value of something be equal to 2? Well, when x is equal to 2, or when x equals negative 2. This equation also has such two solutions. Example C. Here we also have an absolute value, and this time we have a 3. But this 3, now dividing doesn't settle this here, we need subtract 3 from the both sides of the equation. Here we get minus absolute value of x, and here we calculate negative 6 minus 3, which is negative 9. And now everything would be okay, if not for that minus. We'll get rid of this minus by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 1. Dividing by negative 1 changes the signs, so this minus will disappear, leaving us with the absolute value of x. And on this side, the minus will also disappear, and we will have 9. So now we have this cool situation, and we already know that x can be equal to 9. Or x can be equal to negative 9. And that's the end of this example. In this example, we have a 3 outside the absolute value. We don't want this 3 here, but we don't want this 9 here either. And we'll start with this 9. We have to add 9 to the both sides of the equation. We have number 3. The absolute value is still waiting, and here we're adding 6 and 9, which gives us 15. Here all the time there is unvisible multiplication, just to be clear. And now we're dividing everything by 3. And it turns out that the absolute value of x is the same as 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So, if that's the case, x can be equal to 5, or x can be equal to negative 5. So far, we've come up with two solutions, but there are examples of absolute values that require special attention. An example of this is the alpha example. Here we have an absolute value of x equals negative 6. How about this example? Well, the absolute value always gives a positive result, so the absolute value of x will never be equal to negative 6. And such an equation is an inconsistent equation. There is no solution here. The second special case is the absolute value of x equals 0. When is the absolute value of x equals 0? There's only one case. What's inside, that is, our x, can be 0. Only in this one case, the absolute value of this x results in 0. In this case, there are not two solutions, there is only one. But we're going back to typical examples. A typical example, except here there's a fraction. Here's multiplication. And we want to get rid of what's outside the absolute value, so we don't want these three-fifths here. So we'll divide everything by three-fifths. Dividing by three-fifths causes these three-fifths to disappear, leaving us with the absolute value of x equal to 6. Here we can't divide 6 by three-fifths mentally. So we simply write 6 divided by three-fifths. And 6 divided by three-fifths is the same as 6. We change division to multiplication by the reciprocal of the second fraction, that is times 5 thirds, and our absolute value of x equals, in a moment we'll write the result here, because 6, that is 6 firsts, and then 6 and 3 are reduced. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. At the bottom, I'm left with 1's, so I don't need to write the fraction bar anymore. And at the top, I have a 2 and a 5 to multiply. That gives me a result of 10. So, the absolute value of x equals 10 meaning we have two solutions. x can be equal 10, or x could be equal to negative 10. In the example f, we have something a bit different, because here in the absolute value, besides x, a 3 appears inside, x minus 3, 
and the absolute value of that should be equal to 6. And we solve it this way. We need to remember, just like in the beginning, when will the absolute value of something be equal to 6? Well, that something, what's inside, in the first case, that thing could be a 6, because the absolute value of 6 equals 6. In the second case, the absolute value of negative 6 gives us a result of 6. Based on this, we conclude that this interior, namely x minus 3, can first be equal to 6. The first option, and the second option is this interior, which means x minus 3 can be equal negative 6. In these two cases, when x minus 3 would be 6, then we'd have 6 inside, and from that, the result is 6. Or x minus 3, this interior, could be equal to negative 6, and then we also get 6 from the absolute value. There are two such options, and now it's time to work with them. We need to solve such a simple equation. We add 3 to the both sides of the equation. This means that x equals 9. Or there is another option. This second option comes from this equation. Also, we add 3 to the both sides of the equation. And from this, we get negative 3. Thus, x equals 9, or x equals negative 3. Then we have the solutions to our equation. Example G is similar to example F, except here we have a 2 outside the absolute value. The basic principle, you must first get rid of the numbers that are outside the absolute value. So, we do not want this 2 here. Here is multiplication, so we divide everything here by 2. Then the number 2 disappears here, leaving only the absolute value of x minus 3. On this side, we also need to divide the 6 by 2, resulting in 3. Here again, we'll have two cases. First, the interior, which is x minus 3, could just equal 3. Or the second option, the interior x minus 3 can be equal this number, but with a minus, so negative 3. And we have two equations to solve. Here we add 3 to the both sides of the equation. So, x is equal to 6. That's the first result. And from the second one, here we also add 3 to the both sides of the equation. We get from this the result, negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. The solution to this equation is x equal to 6, or x equal to 0. Example h. Here we have a lot of things outside the absolute value. We don't want this 9, and we don't want this 3. Let's start with this 9. To get rid of this number, we have to subtract 9 from the both sides of the equation. These 9s cancel out. Here we left with minus 3 and this whole absolute value of x minus 3, so I'm copying it down. And here, negative 6 and negative 9 make negative 15. And now it's better because I have only one number outside the absolute value. I need to get rid of this minus 3, and I will do so by dividing everything by minus 3. On this side, the minus 3 will be erased, leaving only the absolute value of x minus 3. On this side, negative 15 divided by negative 3 gives me a result of positive 5. And finally, we are home, we've sorted it all out, and now we split it into two cases. The first case is what's in the interior, that is x minus 3. It can be equal to the number 5. The second situation, what's inside that is x minus 3, can be equal to this number, but with a minus, that is negative 5. To solve it, we add 3 to the both sides of the equation. These numbers cancel out, x remains. 5 plus 3 equals 8. This is the first solution, and the second solution will come from this operation. Similarly, we add 3 to the both sides of the equation. So, from this, we get that x equals negative 2. And that's the second solution. So, x could be 8, or x could be negative 2. These are the solutions for this example. In the example i, we have a different situation than before. Now we have two absolute values, except one is nested within the other. We have this smaller absolute value of x, and we have this larger absolute value, which contains the expression, the absolute value of x minus 3 inside. We start with this larger absolute value. The absolute value, this large, should be equal to 2. So there are two scenarios. The whole interior part, that is the entire expression, the absolute value of x minus 3 can be equal to 2. This is our first option. Or the second option is, this interior, the absolute value of x minus 3, can be equal to negative 2. Now we're dealing with each of these options separately. Here we need to add 3 to the both sides of the equation. The numbers cancel out, and only the absolute value of x remains. Here we have 2 plus 3, so after adding, 
the absolute value of x will be 5, and we break this down into two cases, x can be 5, or the interior means x can be negative 5. And those are our first two solutions. And now we're dealing with this second case. Here again, the 3 needs to be reduced, so we add 3 to the both sides. These numbers cancel out. Only the absolute value of x remains. And here, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So we have it like this. The absolute value of x equals 1, meaning x can be equal to 1, or x can be equal to negative 1. And now we have a total of four solutions. Quite similarly as in the example j, we have here two absolute values, a smaller absolute value of x minus 4, and the greater absolute value, which we will focus on first. It contains this whole expression. Here we proceed as usual with the absolute value. Since this blue absolute value equals 3, it means that the interior means what is the inside of the absolute value. Firstly, it can be equal to 3. That is the first option. Or, the interior of the absolute value, which is the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 1, can be equal to negative 3. And now, we have to deal with each of these options separately. Firstly, we need to subtract 1 from the both sides. The numbers cancel out. And here we have 3 minus 1, that equals 2. And now we're breaking it down into two more cases. Firstly, the interior x minus 4 could be equal to 2, or the interior x minus 4. It can be equal to negative 2. We solve each of these cases. We add 4 to the both sides of the equation. Here only x remains. And here, 2 plus 4 equals 6. In the second case, we also add 4 to the both sides. From this, after calculating, we get a result of 2. Thus, we have our first two solutions. Now we move to this case. What do we have to do here? We also need to subtract 1 from the both sides. This absolute value stays. And here we have negative 3, subtract 1. And we got the absolute value of the expression x minus 4 equals negative 4. The absolute value of any expression can never be equal to a negative number. So it is a consistent equation. And there are no new results. The only solutions to this equation are x equals 6 and x equals 2. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I invite you to tune in for the next episodes on the Planet of Mass channel.